discovered 1896 by the Italian miners. At first the guys were searching for gold during the rush hour of gold. They didn't find any gold in this cave. Only find the limestone. At the top there, this is where the guys did the limey, chipping on the white spot. And during that time, lime was in a big demand for the mining companies. So they used the limestone to purify gold, the processed gold, making cement, treat, paste, salts because of the calcium carbonate. Also the guys plastered the rocks with the right over there. So this is a man-made open. This was plastered out by the miners. Mm -hmm. So I will show you some of the natural things. Right on this side. Mm -hmm. Cool. This one, turn around, make sure you see it over here. Yeah. Find your steps. So this site is called Silverback Grotto. This is exactly where the fossil of Littlefoot was discovered. Oh wow. Half ape, half man. From the second gate, five meters away from the left hand side, that's where the fossil is still embedded. So this half ape, half man never ever lived in the caves, simply because most of the natural objects of the caves were all the way from the cave roof. So the guy fell about 20, 25 meters long into the cave. And that's why Little Food is the first complete skeleton discovered around the world. Mm -hmm. So easy for a scientist to know where to look for fossils. Every time we find the natural objects of the caves, should be the waste material right underneath. When you go to Marupa, you can see the video of Little Food, what the really thing happened to the fossils. See how all the bones were still embedded in the rocks. So in this cave, we used to have about 23 natural objects of the caves, but now we're left with six where you can see the surface outside. So most of the openings has been closed up by the limestone or by the movements of the air. So got any questions? Mm -hmm. So good. We keep walking all the way down again. Okay. 
Okay, so at the top there, that's the natural opening of the cave, where you can see the surface outside. So at first, 1896, the miners used to enter through the opening, carry the light, the very same way. So this was entrance and exit of the cave. But it was difficult for the guys to pull everything that way out. They decided the easy way out, plus the entrance that we used. So guys were looking for stalactite over there. Next to you there. So this is stalactite. Stalactite grows from the cave roof and it will drip to the floor forming stalagmite. So stalagmite next to me here. So this is stalagmite. It's very, very rich in calcium carbonate. And sometimes stalactite, stalagmite, they can both grow together until they join and make a beautiful column or pillar. So when we found the pillar right there, this is where the two are joined together. Stalactite, mite, joins over there, make this beautiful formation. Our cave, it's made out of the dolomite rock, which is the gray rock. So dolomite rock preserved calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate, small amounts of manganese and iron. So when the rainwater seeps through the cracks of the dolomite rock, that it will dissolve out calcium carbonate, all the white spot cave deposits. And because of the rainwater is slightly acidic, then it will eat the soft part of the dolomite rocks out and leave caverns like this. Or creating some chambers. So it takes millions and millions of years for a chamber to be like this, and our cave is about 20 million years old. Age of the cave. Very young cave. Okay, let's walk that side. Mind your steps again, careful. Okay, from here, above the head, above the head. So now this is what we're talking about, natural opening of the cave, right at the top. So that's exactly what happened to little foot. Felt in one of the openings, same as this one. So every time we found this opening, there's a bunch of trees that are covering the opening up. Can you imagine walking from this side or going the other side? While you're struggling with trees, you won't be able to see the opening. So that can still happen to each and every one of us. So we make sure everything fenced up. Avoiding human fossils. <laughs> so here we are. So this is the biggest chamber of the cave. It's called elephant chamber. The rock shapes like an elephant. You see the trunk? The ears, the tusk over there, the thick skin, two front legs hanging. And two back legs and the whole body. Imagination. <laughs> and it also shapes like a map of Africa. Can you see it's like an African continent? Cool. Check this out. Beautiful crystals. So we sometimes call the crystals the halactites because they only grow sideways. They are very, very sharp and they can easily cut your hand. So for you to see how sharp they may be, you can also see on this rock. Very, very sharp. This is calcite. So, if any from the top, it's going to cut to you. Cool. Another way.
Ok, temperature of the cave, it's 80 degrees Celsius, doesn't change throughout the year, stays the same. You can only find two things in the caves, which are bats, or sometimes snakes. So most of the time, also snakes fell from the natural openings of the caves. And where do we find snakes? Mostly on the lights, where they will try and keep themselves warm. But snakes can only live for 24 hours, then it dies. Too cold, nothing to fit on, unless we save the snakes. So at the top there, this is where the stalactites were blasted out by the mines. We check this one here. And the beautiful layers behind you, right there. So we found the layers all over the caves. These layers are called the Chad layers. It's a very, very hard rock that carries the cave. So long time ago, the place was once covered with a warm, shallow sea or the inland sea, Transvaal Sea. So water in the area dropped until it reached where the underground water was saturated on the ground. And that's why we found the layers from the top all the way to the bottom. The layer shows you exactly where the water level used to wait for a very long time before it drops down and the layer keeps on dropping. <coughs> ah, thank you. So that's the lowest point of the cave, where you find the underground lake. We used to walk this side, see the lake, we can't do that anymore. Water level has raised up because of the heavy rains that we had in the past 11 months. Mm -hmm. So now, this is where the level of the water is, right over there. You see the water? Okay. Yes. Temperature of the water, 11 degrees. So there's no fish in this lake. We can only find the blind shrimps or amphipods. They are only one centimeter long, fully grown white in color. So they feed on bacteria inside the water. You know, during the heavy rains, the rainwater will purify through the dolomite rock as it makes its way out of the rocks. The lake will rise, but it drops again. And that's because of our neighboring farmers. The guys are using this water as the bore holes. So they use the water for irrigation and some reasons. So for the question. What does the water taste like? Water. <laughs> Is it fresh water or? Fresh water. You want to taste? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you don't swallow the shrimp though. Please mind your steps. Wet and slippery. Wet and slippery. Careful folks. No swimming is allowed, yeah? Yeah, hurry, go. Where'd you go? Go and take, you know, the water. Oh, I look like it. It's like this, it's like this, it's like this, it's like this. Yeah, in summertime, that's why you find lots of things. Yeah, that's right. Close to here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So you can see how clear is the water. You can see all the way to the bottom. The blind shrimp, you see the shrimp there? Nothing. They're very small. There's another one there. Centimeter long, fully grown. Temperature 11 degrees. You can feel how cold is the water. Does it taste like water? Very nice. <laughs> yeah, clear water. So we used to walk from that side, you still see the rubber mat. And wait behind the fence and walk back this way. Mm. Yeah. So we're not sure when are we going back that side. 
in meter yeah. time, we expect that to go that side, one slow process. Okay. So you can go straight, time left, you've got to walk that side. Yeah. We'll never have a fear of this one. We'll Sorry. only put up more, we'll never go back. It will go down, it will. so it only depends if the guys are using the water. Oh, but not yet. So the scuba divers went about 40 meters deep for yeah. zero, but they didn't touch the bottom. Mm -hmm. So on their way back up, one of the guys, mm -hmm. his safety rope was cut off by one of the sharp rocks. No. And that's what the guy did, the rope cut on his way back up, he kept on searching for the guy, yeah. he was found he after six it. weeks, yeah. already dead. In a tunnel where he managed to swim out of the water, trying to work the help on a dry land. So because of the death, hyperthermia and starvation. Well, since the incident, no one else was allowed to come and explore the lake. And that's why we can't really tell how deep is the lake. Mm. So later on, for the guys to see how far does the water flows from here, they poured a coloring dye in the water. So they found the very same color 100 kilometers away from here in Countyville. Oh. One of the mines, a Bonner Hut mine. So that's all the way underground doesn't expose to the surface outside. Wow. Also, the guys did the diving on the other side went about 100 meters deep, but so far, never touched the bottom. Mm. So when the miners were here, the water level was right up there. Mm -hmm. That's why again, this line, they did cover this rocks all the way down, as you can see on the side, how the slime covered the rocks up. So we know during the heavy rains, the rainwater will dissolve life from the rocks from stalactite, stalagmite, and the flow stones. And also the earth is drying up. 1896, water level used to be 2015. That's for 100 years. So the question is, where is the water going? Tell me, why is the, the water line slanted? Cool. Uh, so when the warm shallow sea used to be here, yeah. it makes the rocks to dip further northwards in direction. Because that was the direction of the warm shallow sea. Okay. So that's why everything is dipping northwest. Mm. So that means northwest, that's where you find the deepest point. Mm. Basically, the deepest point in that side. So that means the caves that you see from here, that side, you can still find the lake. Yes. From here, this is where the lake starts. That side. Nothing. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like this. That's okay. Everything goes down to the bottom. So far, so good. Any questions? Okay, so this is where you leave your shoes. Can you please open the gate there? <laughs> Okay. Well, we found roots and tunnels all over the caves. So when you stand there, that's another part of the lake. Okay.
Okay, this rock is called Bracha, B R E W C A A. This is the only type of rock where you can find fossils. It's one of the cave in fields. Long time ago, you used to have an opening up there. When it rains, everything that will be lying next to the opening outside could easily wash through the natural opening by means of erosion. So what makes this waste material to be so hard forms a rock? Dripping lime, carbon rich water. So the lime will drip on top of this waste material. Instead of making stalagmite from the ground, it doesn't. But the lime will seep through all the waste material and later on cemented everything together, forms a rock. So for our excavators, managed to excavate this part out searching for fossils. Come through and have a look here. Animal fossilized bones. So this is an antelope. Wow. You see the vertebrae there? The bone. And that's a rib. Wow. You can touch. And it's so difficult to use the carbon dating on the fossils. Some of the fossils has lived way after 50,000 years ago, beyond the range of carbon dating. So that means this bones has already lost the organic material left inside. So that's completely been replaced with different material? Tan into a rock, yeah. So it's like calcified. So easy for the guys to know where to look for fossils. Every time we find the opening, should be the waste material right underneath. Uh, we never take a picture of a fossil. Uh, we never take a picture of a fossil. Take a picture, buddy. I don't have a picture. I'll send you pictures. <laughs> okay. fossils on the branch. So you can imagine using compressed dental drill hammer chisel. Very, very slow process. <laughs> and they still have to excavate this out. Take your time again. Guys, Thank you. 
the helmet. Just hold that.
was led, he made it pure out of Kenya. Check this out. So this is Dr. Robert Bruce, the guy who discovered Mrs. Flat. So he was born 1866 from Scotland. 1947, that's when the guy discovered an astrophysicist, Mrs. Pless. When he discovered the fossil, he was 81 years of age. Oh. So four years later, that's when he passed away in 1951, when he was 85. The guy took over, gentleman down there, Philip Valentine Tobias. So the guy started working here since 1955 till 2005. Worked as the lead of the excavation for 50 years. And he was also head of the Department of Anatomy at Vent University. Aye. One thing about the guy, he discovered over 600 specimens of homemade, just unlike he didn't find the whole skull or the whole complete skeleton. Aye. South African guy was born 1925, passed away 2012, June the 7th, when he was 86 years of age. Aye. So the guy discovered the guy, Juliamo Martinani, so that's Italian guy. So in case you'd like to see where the fossil of Mrs. Pless was discovered, then way out of the top, you will turn left. 300 uh -huh. meters back to the building, you'll be able to see some other topographical maps of the cradle of the Daddy. internet around this area. Short way back, on the way out, turn right 200 meters huh? back. So the cradle of you may find, you find over 500 caves. So most of the sites are privately laid on. So that's why it's difficult to visit the site. And Moropeng, that's a huge exhibition for visitors at the Hotel of Indian Khan as a whole. So all the information will be placed there. So ladies and gentlemen, before you go, the reason why we see the shiny nose, we do not know the most, this is where we wish for good luck. If you lost a hand, lots and lots of crystal. You're only allowed to rub one. So rub both, bad luck doesn't work. So either you go for the nose, good luck, or the head, wisdom. Thank you very much for a wonderful talk. Thank you. 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 Thank